thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Jeffrey or Heshi Raskis. Um, I, and I'm, I'm just going to talk about um, Rat Picker, which is a tool for propagating statistical and systematic uncertainties in biological analyses. So a rat picker, by the way, is that tractor looking thing that you use to remove rats from, from a field before planting it. And I thought it was a nice name, so I, so I took it. So um, uh, there's a lot of things that I could talk about here. There's the, the math behind the rat picker is super interesting, but I, I don't have time to talk about it. So I'm going to talk about, in general, um, statistical and systematic uncertainty. So statistical uncertainty comes from the finite sample size of your data set. You have a finite number of patients. You have a finite number of cells. You have a finite number of reads in a, in a genomic analysis. Um, we do multiplex and unifluorescence, but everything I'm going to talk about here is not specific to that and could be used in genomics or, or pretty much anything. Um, your statistical uncertainty is going to go down um, typically following a Poisson distribution, like one over square root of m. The relative uncertainty goes down by one over square root of m. Systematic uncertainties come from errors in the measurement or the model. So in our lab, this would be like hardware errors, or in our algorithm, I show here an example of a segmentation error where that cell is split in half and that's not correct. Um, and there are, um, and in genomics or other fields, you, you can imagine what, what kind of errors you might have. The general principle is that when you have a higher sample size, your statistical error goes down, but your systematic error does not go down automatically. And so it becomes more important. Um, whenever you do a correction, which, which we all do, we were talking about um, in, the, in the last couple talks, um, we want to estimate the residual systematic error. Your correction is, is good, and hopefully it gets better every time you make a new paper and a new iteration but it's never gonna be perfect. And you wanna estimate what's left. Um, this, is, this is an example of how we estimate um, certain types of systematic errors in our analysis. So we have two independent measurements of a subset of our image as shown on that, um, I don't know how to use the pointer, but as shown on the leftmost figure here, um, we have four um, high power fields and they're taken with an overlap between them. For analysis, we use the primary region, which we do by cutting the overlap region down in half. But we can use the secondary region to get an estimate of our error, um, which includes residual edge effects from the camera or from edge effects from the cell segmentation or anything like that. Once we estimate the uncertainty, we, let's say we have a 10% uncertainty on the number of cells of a certain type. We want to propagate it through to the final analysis results, which could come in any number of forms. Um, the statistical error from the finite number of patients in your analysis, that's, that's included in p-values. It's sometimes, sometimes you see in papers, maybe, I don't know, 10% of the time, you see Roth curves or Kaplan-Meier curves with, with error bands on them. And that includes the statistical error from the finite number of patients. It typically does not include um, any systematic errors or any sample-wise errors. And Roth picker is a, tool to, is a tool to address that. Yeah, so this is another, um, another slide about that. Uh, like how what how were you how were unique from from previous methods there's not one unique rock curve shifted up at 68 percent or shifted down at 68 percent confidence level there is a family of rock curves you need to adjust one parameter and pick one rock curve that um that captures that that variation for illustration purposes um and again I'm, we're not aware of any previous method that propagates systematic uncertainties uh, we build a method for dealing with statistical uncertainties that we want to incorporate systematic uncertainties into. We don't have a single approach to deal with both quite yet. Um, this is based on the combined tool from, from particle physics. My PhD is in particle physics, and we're heavily inspired by that. Um, combine, a combined harvester is also a farming implement. That was why I, I um, went with rock picker. So this is an example analysis using CD8 FATSP3 cells. Um, which show a positive correlation with response to immunotherapy in, in lung cancer, also in melanoma, but this one is lung cancer. Um, the statistical error from the number of patients and from the number of cells are both, are both pretty large. We ident if we identify characteristic neighborhoods, which, which look like where the CD8 p 3 cells live, those are 200 times more common. And so the statistical error on the number of cells, the middle plot goes down and we can get an estimate of our systematic error using, using rock picker. Um, we currently have two different methods in rock picker, one for the statistical error from the number of patients, one for the sample-wise uncertainties. 
And our next, uh, our next step mathematically is to incorporate both together. Um, take a look at our repository documentation, which I, um, for the, for information on the math, which I, which I didn't have a, a chance to get into, and also example Jupyter notebooks that um, reproduce these plots and some other examples of how to run it. And I'm happy to take questions during the, um, during the Q and A session or, or reach out to me separately. Um, and I'm very excited about like all aspects of um, dealing with systematic errors in a mathematical way. So if, um, and this could be done in any field. I've even had um, social scientists. Um, who are interested in talking to me about it. So if, if anyone's interested, please let me know. Thank you.